Welcome to the podcast from the crypt. I'm Devin. And I'm Sleepy Joe. <laughs> Steph's out of it today. So out of it. I'm so <laughs> fucking tired. Well, I have a little announcement. So we did a poll on Facebook and Instagram. So for future, if you mm-hmm. guys don't know, we uh, that's where we post when we have a question. Yes. When we're trying to figure out what we want to do pertaining to the podcast, we'll post it on Instagram stories or Facebook stories. And we did a poll because obviously October's coming, mm-hmm. and we want to know if you guys wanted our spooky October episodes or to continue on with Israel and what you guys wanted. So everybody voted, and the results were in that October, we're going to take a break from Israel Keys. This will be our last episode till November about Israel Keys. Yes, so yes. we're going to take a little breaky poo. And do some spooky October Halloweeny stuff. Shitsky for you guys. Ooh, I can't wait. It'll get like you know paranormal, weird, whatever. Um, and anyways, we've been doing a lot of true crime, so mm-hmm. I'm ready, and I'm ready to research something that I don't know much about. Yeah, you know, because most true crime, everybody kind of knows. Yeah, you know, most stories have heard about it. So I'm excited. So we're going to do that for our regular episodes and our Patreon episodes. So it's yes. like if you're a Patreon, you get the double the spook every week. Spooky icky. <laughs> so um, just wanted to let you guys know that we will be taking a little break from Israel Keys. Yes. And then we'll continue with him in November. November. And we'll, we'll remember, do spooky remember right. the 1st of November. <laughs> <clears throat> um. So, let's get into more Israel Keys. I feel like it's been more than a week since we last recorded. I don't I know. know why. <laughs> it's been the longest week of my life. So, when we last recorded, I kind of was going over just some of Israel's um, rented vehicles um, starting in 1999 to 2000. Mm-hmm. Um you know, we don't know what he did with those vehicles, where he went with those vehicles. Exactly. But he was renting a lot of fucking vehicles. We have an idea. But <laughs> so we, we think he sure. was out, you know, killing and chilling. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what I. That's a good one. That's, that's a good one. <laughs> that's what I would. Uh, Instead of Netflix and chilling, he was, was killing and killing chilling. Killing and chilling. Mm-hmm. So, but that's what I assume that he was doing during these uh rented vehicles unless you know what i'd really like to know did israel keys ever even like own a car because he's always renting cars so i'm wondering if he ever owned a car or renting a car was like just how he got around got around because it's like well i feel like he did because didn't he when he was or was he using his girlfriend's car when he would go up to washington to bring i don't know it's never specified you know what i mean Um, and i i haven't heard it anywhere or it's never been any articles i've read any podcasts hmm. and trust me i've listened to like seven thousand podcasts on him that's a good i have never heard if israel owned a car or not obviously he had a license because you can't rent a car without a license but did he own one like because he's renting a lot of cars unless he's doing a lot more murdering than i originally thought thought, yeah because sometimes i'm like "Eh, i don't know if he killed that many people but then i'm like why is he renting so many cars so i'm curious to figure that out maybe i'll give it a goog later give it a goog but i but i don't know (laughs) but i don't know you know what would you even google did israel keys ever own a car i mean i'm sure i mean there's got to be a record of it if he did i know so i'm just curious but <clears throat> so from January of 2000 to June of 2000, he was stationed in Egypt on a temporary duty assignment. Then on July 26, 2000, he rented another vehicle from Enterprise in Lakewood, Washington. Then on May 13, 2001, Israel got a DUI in Tacoma, Washington, which we kind of went over towards the end of his military career. He got that DUI. On November 15th, 2001, 
Louise Chaput drove from Sherbrooke, Quebec, Canada to Pinkham's Grant, New Hampshire. Oh. I know, in our neck of the woods. Our neck of the woods. We're going to have to do it's a um, it's Killing Season in New Hampshire episode on her. Oh. Because all these people I do want to like go over more in depth later. But yeah. obviously for his, his case, his uh, episodes, we'll just kind of skim over. Yeah. So she rented a room at the Joe Dodge Lodge at the Appalachian Mountain Club Visitor Center and expected to just spend kind of a long weekend enjoying our beautiful mountains in New Hampshire. Ah, yes. Um, Louise adored the outdoors, the scenery, and hiking, but her favorite was the Mount Washington Valley. And I've actually been to the top of Mount Washington. I have not. And it's cold as balls. I have no desire to be the top of a mountain that high. (laughs) It was, dude, the whole time I was like, like, Shitting. Yeah, I was getting seasick. Not seasick. Motion know. sickness? Well, just height. Like, I'm, oh, I'm scared of the sick. height. Oh, okay. <laughs> I have a fear of heights, so I was, yeah, like, same. sick in that way. Oh. Like, I kept thinking I was going to fall off, or Gemma was going to fall off, or Mike was going to fall off. I mean... We were all going to fall off. Everyone falls <laughs> off. <laughs> and we went in the middle of the summer, and it's cold as balls. Yeah. Like, at the top. Um, but the scene, but the scenery, it's unbelievable on the way up. And yeah, I'm sure. To the top. I'm sure it's it's like... worth it. But I mean, we went in fucking August, and it was like fucking thirty degrees when we got to the top. Yeah, it has a very extreme weather, and I'm also and that. the wind was whipping and shit. Mm-hmm. Like the wind's like whipping. It's like rain, cold and freezing, and we're like, what is this? People live up there, and I, do, I mean, I know they're scientists, so they like want to be there but i <laughs> they get paid to be there <laughs> yeah i don't no thanks i don't mm-hmm. want to go up there for fun Mm-mm. but um she likes you know that area of new yeah. Hampshire. her daughter kareen was all like always like a little nervous when her mom would go on these trips alone and would always tell her to be safe louise g- jokingly told her to call the police if she wasn't back on monday not knowing what was to come uh-oh Louise arrived later in the day around 3 p.m. to the Pinkham Notch Visitor Center in New Hampshire. She asked one of the employees for directions to a short hike that would have her back before nightfall. The employee suggested a short hike that started just across from the visitor center, and this employee would be the last person to see Louise alive. Louise didn't arrive home Monday as planned, and her family called the police, just as she had joked about. Mm, I hate awkward. when I hate when like jokes become real, real dude. Life. Yeah, like, and it's not a joke anymore. Yeah, and this just you real cross life. that line. Yeah, the police found her car parked at a trailhead across the street from the trail that the employee had suggested that she hiked on. It looked as though someone stole the keys to Louise's car, but just left the car. Hmm. So no keys, but car one of her hiking backpacks were missing but strangely her hiking shoes water and chocolate which she was known for bringing like always bringing when she would hike always chocolate that was like her thing (laughs) that would always come with her when she was hiking um but those were all still in her car yeah and so it's like she didn't even like even really make it out of the car really or she did and when she got back is when something or she planned on it being such a short hike that she just kind of left it just kind of wanted to do like maybe a little walk like walk like a half an hour in and then turn around and come back type of thing you know but her body was found on thanksgiving day with multiple stab wounds Whoever killed Luis found her on the trail alone, first forced her off the trail, and made her walk down into a clearing. That's sad. Her attack was deemed random and most likely someone Luis didn't know. Her homicide still remains unsolved. And of course, her murder just kind of screams Israel Keys. Mm-hmm. Um, he could to- could have totally been staking out the trail, looking for potential victims. That was yeah. his thing. Remember, he loved hiding and watching, yep. and he liked not being people. seen. Exactly, hunting people. He also, as we know, stated that quote Canadians don't count. Uh-huh. So. And she was Canadian. Sure was. And a lot of people think that Luis could have been his victim, but he was in Washington at the time in the army. 
So I don't know how much freedom he could have had to go all the way to New Hampshire at the time. Yeah, that's a jump. And I don't know if you remember in the um, recordings I've played, one of them he was talking about how the army was like always on your ass. Like where you were, remember? He was like, I couldn't do anything, do shit when I was in the army. Plus, he has stated before that he didn't commit any crimes other than that D DUI while in the army. But as I did state, he did rent quite a few vehicles from Washington during the time that she died. died. So we don't know for sure if he was being honest. And we don't know, because some, some of his rented cars, I can find how many miles he, he drove mm-hmm. in them. Um, and this, the ones that I've listed to you, I couldn't find how many miles were driven in them. So yeah. who knows? He could have, because you know him. He'll fucking drive fucking 10 hours in a day and not be phased not fucking kill someone and then lash. drive fucking 10 miles 10 hours back and yeah it's nothing you know so we don't know but a lot of people think could be him could not be him i don't know because like it, it's a long drive it's a very long that's from one end of the country to the other yeah, like literally usually, one coast to the other that's not a 10 hour drive that's like a week i know i know it probably so is. i, I mean right. unless he flew but i don't know that's being in the army and him saying that they're always on his ass i doubt he could finagle yeah getting on a plane going there committing a murder then getting on a plane and coming back i mean that's yeah. a lot of fucking work and they'd probably for a wonder. random person yeah and he'd so. have to probably do it all in, in the weekend, yeah. like when she died. But it was a long weekend also, so maybe, maybe he could have and they didn't know. But I don't know. I've never been in the Army, so I don't know if you have to like tell them if you're leaving on the weekend or... Well, I like, guess it depends. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Do you get days off? Like, mm. yeah, I'd, I'd, like, I have no idea how that works. Yeah, I'd have to ask somebody. So, <laughs> I don't know. Oh, and I wanted to do some crime scene cleanup. I forgot. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Um, our friend Tanner told me, because remember we talked about um, how one of the potential victims in the last episode worked at a store called Babbage? hmm And I was like, probably a clothing store. Well, it was a video game store oh. back in the, the 80s and 90s. Oh, well, I would have never known that. Me either. I just assumed it must have been a clothes, Same. clothing store because... I'm sexist, I guess, because I assume because she was a woman, she was working at a well, no, clothing I'm, store, so I'm sorry, guys. But For me, Babbage just sounds like a fucking clothing doesn't store. Doesn't it? Like, and also, you don't really like hear about video game stores. The only video fucking game store I know is GameStop. I knew you were going to say GameStop. Yep. yep. Me That's too. It. That's I can't it. think of anything else. But, um, yeah, so Tanner, Tanner gave that a quick goog for us. Oh, well, thanks, and Tan. And it's a video game store. Huh. So Good to know. Anyways, so from 2001 to 2007, Israel was in Nia Bay, Washington. On November 21st, 2001, Cami Volendroff and her boyfriend, Eugene Hyatt, went missing. Uh Uh-oh. They were last seen at Bailey Bay State Park in Depot Bay, Oregon, and were staying at an oceanfront condo with Eugene's grandparents. So they left the condo around 10 a.m., letting Eugene's grandparents know that they planned to explore and look for tide pools for the day. Oh, that's cute. I know. Isn't it cute? Like, that's so cute I feel and like, wholesome. Yeah, I feel like they don't have a care in the world, you know? What are we going to do today? Let's just look for tide pools. Precious. Isn't it precious? That is precious. And they were teenagers. Um, neither of the couple were ever heard from again when they left that day. Authorities did come to the conclusion that the couple had most likely been swept out to sea and drowned. A storm had hit just about the time the couple went missing, and a powerful wave um, could have just grabbed them and not let them go. One of Eugene's shoes was found near Boiler Bay Cove a few days after the couple's disappearance. So... Hmm. You know, like maybe the wave took him out, yeah. knocked his shoe off. Well, because the waves come in quick. Sometimes there's no avoiding them, and they could. That's definitely plausible. Yeah, I agree. This cove was just about a mile away from where the couple was last seen, but their bodies have never been found. So it sounds like an accident, right? Mm-hmm. But this couple matches Israel's description of a double homicide that he told the FBI, FBI that he committed in Washington. Oh. 
He said that the couple he killed was either kidnapped from or buried in Washington. If they were buried there, it was near a valley. They were a male and female couple. One of them was killed when Israel was trying to hold them down by blunt force trauma. Israel refuses to tell the FBI if the couple was married or what type of relationship mm-hmm. they had. You know, boyfriend, girlfriend, married, brother and sister. You yeah. could really call anything a couple. You know, yeah. mother and daughter. You know, anything can be a couple. We don't know if the couple were residents of Washington, tourists, or residents that he could have kidnapped from a nearby state and brought back to Washington. He also stated that he may have moved the victim's car somewhere to put some distance between where the vehicle was found and where he actually kidnapped them. Hmm. And he also stated that this, you know, the time when he killed this couple happened after his daughter was born in October of 2001 and before July of 2006. And Cammie and Eugene went missing in November of 2001. Huh. So it kind of lines up. Like, right after his kid is born. He's like, all right, time to go do some moita. I feel like if anything... Um, Big happens. Yeah, yeah. Happen, I was trying to think of the word. He needs to release himself. Yeah, yeah. He needs to, like, kill. Yeah. It sounds you know? about right? It sounds fucked up, but... It does. It kind of makes sense in a fucked up it's way, It's like you his know? way of showing his excitement, maybe. Yeah, or relieving, relieving, relieving his stress, stress yeah. you know? Like, shit, maybe I should try that so I can be less stressed. Uh, I don't know about that. Uh, you don't think so? I mean, I've thought about murder. We could literally just look up the sex offenders and when we feel oh, stressed, true, true. make sure they're bad, you know? Not mm-hmm. just randos. Not like Cammie and Eugene. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right, you're right. Right? Yeah, you're right, you're right. Okay. All right. I bet it would feel good after. I'm in. <laughs> he also stated that this couple was his second and third murder. Washington was a lot easier in a lot of ways because once I lived out in Nia Bay, I knew all of Washington pretty well, and except I was so isolated out there, once you drive past Port Angeles, it's like you're in a new world anyway, so. What's that whole part, there's a whole set of mountains right there, right, that separates Nia Bay from? Yeah, the Olympic, the Olympic range is, there's mountains everywhere out there, but. You seem adamant that there's no possible federal nexus with the Washington cases. And um, I'm just shocked because knowing the peninsula like we do, there's so much federal land out there, especially with the National Forest and National Parks. And, you know, my understanding then would be that nothing's happened on those type of lands. Are we correct in understanding that? or No. I just didn't, I didn't know that would qualify as a federal crime. What, if it's a national park or something? National park or national forest, we could have jurisdiction. On a felony. So, see, this all this stuff is legal details all new to me. So, but that's good to know. It's a possibility. <laughs> so I played that recording because Israel's very like wishy washy with how much details he wants to give. He mm-hmm. doesn't want to tell certain murders and stuff. And it's because he's very worried that he's going to tell about a murder and it's not going to be on federal land. So the FBI won't have jurisdiction over the murder and it will be like a like a state. Uh, And he wants to be I don't know, I guess he wants to stay with the FBI when he's talking. Huh. I don't know if it's because you go, I don't know if you go to like, I don't think murder would end up in federal prison, but maybe it does if it's on federal land, like they were saying. So I don't really know if it's because he'd rather go to federal prison or I don't know if it's because he just enjoys talking to the FBI. I don't know if it's because he just doesn't want anybody else to come talk to him or get moved from the jail that he's currently in in Alaska. I don't know. Yeah. But that's why he's like not talking well, as much. I'm, that's why they keep saying. And I don't know. I'm just so pit. I would have just lied my ass off. Yeah. I would have been like, we have jurisdiction over everything, big boy. <laughs> so you tell me. So start talking. <laughs> yeah. You tell me who, when, and where, and I got you. Don't worry. I'll prosecute you. Don't worry. But yeah, like, if he federal land, I'm pretty sure that would be he would end up going to federal prison for that because that's 
so different. I'm, I'm wondering too if he just likes the Alaska jail because yeah, and he just wants to stay there, or I don't know what his like obsession is with it. Hmm. I don't know if he knows more about law than I do because I I'm not really sure about. I figure that the FBI always comes in with serial killers and yeah, you know, um, I don't know. So I don't know if there's like a there's something special to Israel Keys that he just wants to talk to the FBI. Mm-hmm. He just wants it in their hands. He's special, all right. So, so I just wanted to play that to show that he's very concerned about giving any information, information. that could possibly be linked to another, you know, county or town or state or whatever for yeah. his his weird I don't, his weird obsession. I hate him. But um, back to Eugene and and Cammy. So <clears throat> maybe the couple didn't even make it to the beach that day. Some theorize um, there were no witnesses that actually saw them there at the beach. Maybe they had run into Israel, and remember he was an opportunist. Mm-hmm. So all you really had to do was run into Israel Keys, and if he was feeling frisky, you were fucked. You <laughs> literally and, and metaphorically, metaphorically both. Well, I, you can't rape the willing. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, Steph. I'd, I would give him a run for his money. I'd be like, oh, yeah, you like that? You like that? What are you raping him Yeah, now? I'm turning the card around, bitch. <laughs> Bend over. Ah, you probably like it. Yeah. <laughs> you like that, huh? You like that, big boy? You like that, Daddy Warbucks? <laughs> That's right. I'd you're flip right, it around right. on him. You're right. So on April 29th, 2002, Israel stayed at a hotel called the Hong Kong Inn. Inn. In, in, Hong Kong Inn. Whatever that in, is. In Port Angeles, <laughs> Washington. I think it sounds amazing. I would love to stay at the Hong <laughs> Kong Inn. Um, then on August 28th, 2003, he stayed at another hotel in Port Angeles, Washington called the Port Side Inn. Which is interesting, too, because he's renting a lot of cars. He's staying in a lot of hotels. Course. I don't know, but the thing is, it sucks because we don't know what the fuck he's doing. Yeah. Unless he's getting rid of bods. Getting rid or killing of people. Evidence. And he stayed at the port side in again on October 19th of 2003. He must have got great service there. He's fucking... I wonder if there's like free breakfast, you know, in the morning. <laughs> he's fucking spending a lot of money on renting cars and hotels when yeah, he could just... I... he For one, he already owns a home yeah. that he could go live in. He owns two homes. And then he fucking could buy a car, which would be... Unless he already has a car, I don't yeah. know. He's spending a lot of money on these stupid things. Where's he get, And my question is, where's he getting all this money from? Oh, don't worry. We'll get into some of the ways he got money. Because and they're called I know bank robberies. Damn, oh, that's true. Because I know damn well the army don't pay that well. <laughs> well, he does do bank robberies. Like I said, my timeline is only stuff that we can really 100% confirm. Firm. So right now he could be also robbing banks. But I True. just don't have a confirmation. Like, he's never said it. Yeah. Um, no one's ever planted him there. There's no videos of it. Whatever it may be. There's nothing to corroborate. Got you. So, he could possibly be robbing banks at the same time as he, he did now. And it seems like a lot of time he would kill people and rob a bank right around the same time. Like, it was a ritual. That's so you know weird. what I mean? Kill a motherfucker, so rob a bank, get money, fuck bitches, you know? Fuck bitches, unwilling, get money. <laughs> That was his, like, motto. I bet he had a T that said that. Probably. Probably have, like, a koozie. <laughs> and he sat sat by the pool at the Hong Kong Inn. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Drinking a Mai Tai. <laughs> so from February, February 6, 2004 to February 13, 2004, Israel rented a car in Salt Salt Lake City, Utah. So he kept this car for a while. Oh, wow. It was a silver Volkswagen Jetta. And this is one of the ones that I know how many miles he drove. So he drove 522 miles in this car. And when he was, when you rent a car, sometimes you will have permission to leave the state. And sometimes and you, don't. you don't have permission to leave the state. So with this car, he didn't have permission from Enterprise to leave the state. But do you really think that that would stop him? He's no. fucking killing people, raping people, robbing banks. I don't think he's going to be afraid of the Enterprise man, you know? Yeah, he's not going to be afraid of Enterprise coming after him <laughs> if he crosses state lines. Yeah, never know, never know. Oh, boy. And then I'm going to bring you back to New Hampshire again. And on February 9th, 2004, a woman went missing. She went missing 
in our home state of New Hampshire. And some believe that Israel Keys had something to do with it. Oh, I know. And where we're her going name with this. is Maura Murray. Yes. <laughs> Which we need to talk about at the end too, because there's a little update in her case that just came. Oh, really? Last week. Well, could be pertaining to her case. I'll get to it when I get to the end okay. of this, because um, I was like, oh shit. But um, so Maura was a college student from Massachusetts. And long story short, she drove to New Hampshire on February 9th, 2004, crashed her car, and literally disappeared into thin air. So the car crash didn't involve any other car. So it was just her car. Yes. Yeah, I knew that. It was a a self-car crash. Yes. And obviously, like I said, we'll do an It's Killing Season in New Hampshire on her, too. Everybody will do a deep dive later. We need to do just an episode on her, because it's a doozy. Yeah, It's a a doozy of a case. So the police were called by two different residents who reported her car being off the road, just kind of chilling there. Yeah. The first call came in around 7.27 p.m. It was a local bus driver, and they told police that he could see a woman standing outside her black Saturn. So she was spotted around 7.30. Then a police officer arrived around 7.46 p.m., literally 20 minutes after the bus, bus driver had literally looked at Mora. And he found the car to be locked, but didn't see a single soul around. Which means that something happened to her in just a span of 20 fucking minutes. Yeah, which is crazy. Bus driver should have never left. No. Should have he... stayed there, kept eyes. Yeah. But I'm not, I shouldn't blame because it's not like he fucking knew. He's yeah, not it's not like you know the person's going to go missing or anything Yeah, like it's not like, and it's not like you're going to immediately think that. I mean, maybe we would because we that's... We're so crazy, yeah. Yeah, but... I it's can't go anywhere. With, if I if I see a fucking trash bag on the side of the road, I think it did body. Me too, dead. always. And I'm um, always tempted to pull over and look, but I'm like, I don't want to be that person no. to find that. Today I was driving and the person in front of me pulled over on the side of the road and let me pass and then got right back behind me. Oh, and Jesus. the whole way I'm fucking looking in my rear view, I'm like, is this motherfucker trying to follow me? Sometimes it, uh, that happens to me, but it's only because I'm riding their ass. I was thinking maybe I am a daydreamer when I drive, so mm-hmm. I couldn't remember if I was riding their ass or not, because that was the first thing I thought of. I'm like, was I riding their ass? And then I'm like, I don't think I was. Weird. So, but it was really weird, that and it freaked weird. me out. But that's because our brains are wired that way. Mm-hmm. If you were a normal person, you wouldn't even think twice about no, that. I'm always aware of my surroundings. Yep, Always. So there were no tracks seen going into the woods near her car, um, leaving people to believe that Mora stayed on the road the whole time before her disappearance. Yeah. The best explanation would be that somebody kidnapped Mora or, you know, she got in their car. They said mm-hmm. they were going to help her and, and then never let her that. out. But more than likely, it would be someone who knew the area, someone who could get her without being seen and out of the area without being seen. Or it could have been dumb luck, the kind of dumb luck that Israel seemed to always have. Yeah. Mora could have been in the wrong place at the wrong time, and it was the perfect opportunity for Israel. But the even stranger part of this case (laughs) is no one knew why Mora was actually there on that road that night in New Hampshire. She was studying to be a nurse at the University of Massachusetts Amherst, why the fuck did she end up in the woods of New Hampshire? It's kind of like, okay, like, how, Very random. how did you end up there alone, too? You know, it's not like mm-hmm. she was with friends, they had a plan, whatever. Her father had just visited her, visited her at her college two days before she went missing, and he didn't hear any plans of this. But she did just recently borrow his car to go to a party and hit a guardrail, causing about $8,000 in damage to his Holy car. Holy cannoli. Three months before that, Mora was actually arrested because she stole a credit card and was ordering McDonald's and charging it to the card. Which is, like, totally random. Uh, That's, like, like when you're on another broke level. Like, if you steal a credit card and you're not, like, buying Louis Vuitton, you're out there fucking buying buying Mickey D's. I mean, that's, like... That's some strange. shit. That's that some is shit. Strange. So obviously, I think she was going through some yeah. some hard times here. I mean, she's yeah. you know hitting guardrails because obviously, I mean, they say she wasn't drunk driving, but I mean, who knows? How do you hit a guardrail she, and cause eight thousand dollars worth of damage? Yeah, if you're just you know. I mean, whatever. yeah, we all hit some ice and and shit happens, but yeah. I don't know. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure you're going to mention it, but she also had alcohol in her car when she went missing. Oh no, I didn't write that down. Oh, you didn't? Well, she no, did. I just did a little. Yeah. 
Well, so I mean, oh, so like she might maybe have a she little was going, problem. Yeah, or maybe she was going somewhere right. to meet somebody maybe. and brought bring an alcohol. Yeah, but I just thought it was really strange that she literally stole somebody's credit card to just buy fat. It was all fast food. That is so weird, like, and random, really weird. Unless she just like didn't want anyone to know that she was like eating McDonald's. Well, then use so cash. So she went to the fucking point. Don't steal someone's credit card. <laughs> just use cash. I know untraceable <laughs> right and then like eat it in your car and then throw or, ev- all the evidence away in the trash can in the mcdonald's people don't know how to know. hide their eating skinny eating people addiction. just don't know because i could tell you i get fucking easily the only person i can hide that from is my mom she's got a nose like a fucking bird she can smell she can she's s- like you eat mcdonald's today literally i came McDouble, home, large fry <laughs> i came home one day and she goes did you go to McDonald's? I go, no, why? She's like, oh, well, you smell like McDonald's. I was what? like, excuse me. Okay, I did. Did you? Oh, I but did. I didn't know this did was you? a crime. <laughs> wow. Jeez. Jeez. Well, maybe, literally sniff me out. Maybe that was happening tomorrow, so she had to go to extreme measures. Yeah. Mm, maybe. Um, But the charge for her stealing, you know, the credit card and using it at McDonald's was eventually dismissed. And she was just put on good behavior because it was really her first time being involved with the law. And I mean, if I was the person who she stole the credit card from and all she was buying was McDonald's, I'd be like, you know, girl, I've been there. there. I'd feel bad because I'd be like, damn, do you not have like money to eat? Like you do your best. I don't know why she was doing that. I know. Um, So this really just might be a tale of spiraling out of control and maybe drugs were involved maybe alcohol was involved like you said maybe it was just you know sometimes people go to college and they can't handle the partying and the party scene and and they just go fucking crazy and steal credit cards and eat mcdonald's from mickey d's um but maybe when she got into the car accident once again because she just got in a car accident Mm -hmm. with her dad's car maybe she didn't want to face her father and tried to like leave the scene Mm -hmm. but ended up getting lost in the woods or maybe some sort of drugs were a factor in her decision making. The police did find that the day before her disappearance, she searched for directions to Burlington, Vermont. And these directions were found in her car. The day of her disappearance, she sent an email to all her teachers stating that there had been a death in her family and she would have to take some time away. And hmm. it was a lie, obviously. Yeah. She also made a call to a hotel in Stowe, Vermont, but didn't, like, set up a reservation. Just kind of asked them questions about it mm-hmm. and if they had availability or whatever, openings, whatever the fuck you call them. Yeah, vacancies. Vacancies. Um, her family stayed in a condo in Bartlett, New Hampshire for vacation. She also made a call there suggesting she might have been on her way there instead of Vermont, but she had the, you know, the MapQuest directions mm-hmm. to Vermont with her also. Ah, uh, yes, MapQuest. So, yep, you remember those days? Sure do. Um, because her family stayed at that condo at least four times a year for her entire life, her dad doesn't believe that she could have gotten lost because they know the area so well. Mm-hmm. She knew the area like the back of her hand. On April 3rd, 2019, police did get a warrant to dig up part of the basement of a home that was located on the same road where Mora went missing, but nothing was found. The police dug up this basement because locals of the area kept calling in, stating they believed there was a body in the basement. Which is really <laughs> random. Um, I don't, why were they thinking well, that? Well, these locals also used radar to absorb, ob- observe the ground under this home's basement. And saw that there was a disturbance. So these people were fucking... Talk well, about that's why you don't neighbors. Fu- well, that's why you don't fuck around with New Hampshire, you know? We fucking caught fucking j- just stain, whatever yeah, that bitch is. Stain. You don't fuck around in New Hampshire, you know we what nosy. I mean? We the fucking dating business. game killer, I think, came here and we fucking yep. ran him right out of fucking yep. town. Yep. We don't fuck around. <laughs> We don't fuck around. We, don't we like think you have a body. Here. We think you have a body. We're going to get fucking Sniff radar and mm-hmm. we're going to look under your ground. We don't like your kind around <laughs> here. So they found a disturbance with their radar. Um, and uh, the search dogs did hit on it also. They were like, mm-hmm. something's here. Um, but this wasn't enough for a search warrant. But when eventually the house sold to new owners, the, cor- the current owners allowed police to do a search. But like I said, nothing was found. The Mm. disturbance that was detected was just a piece of old piping that got buried under the basement floor. My question is, how the fuck did they 
have radar? <laughs> They what if they have a fucking drone <laughs> flying over the fucking house, penetrating with radar? Like, that's my question is like, how the fuck did you just stumble up think across they... the radar of someone's basement? Maybe they waited till, like, you know, night and, like, came to the back of their house. And they have those things that can detect if there's, like, just a disturbance, you know? Huh. And that's why they detected the the piping as a yeah. disturbance so maybe they fucking got close enough somehow this guy really must have maybe when some people it, off maybe when the house was for sale yeah they you oh, know true, came maybe. in and went down i don't know yeah but that's um, my question yeah this guy must have really chapped some asses because yeah. everyone believed he did it for so long and you know he could have maybe he did bury her body down there and then when he moved out he fucking moved mm-hmm. it you know what i mean mm-hmm. we don't know because the dogs did hit on it, so yeah. it could have been the body was there, but it has been moved. Got relocated. <clears throat> um, some think, like I said, that Israel just happened upon Mora on the remote road, and she was a victim of opportunity, which we've heard Israel say that that's exactly what he'd go for. Mm-hmm. Some believe that Israel could have stalled Mora for a little bit and just made the scene look like like a car accident when he ended up kidnapping her you know like made her pull over and whatever and then made it look like Like she got into a little whatever her car with herself um he did brag to the fbi that some of his murders were ruled accidental and many think that she was kind of you know just got like lost in the woods or whatever Mm -hmm. israel keys also has admitted that he favored the east coast and even referred to new hampshire specifically as his quote stomping grounds that makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> Dude, you know how uncomfortable? I'm so glad. We could have fucking walked by this motherfucker and not known. I'm so glad I wasn't of age where I was, you know, dating and like online wasn't a thing because I would have been a victim. <laughs> yeah, I know. And like I said, he was in Manchester before. We could have literally walked yeah. by this dude. Uh-huh. We could have, but we would have been young. Yeah, we, I would have been, you would have been like 10. I would have been 11 or 12. <laughs> yeah, so we would have been young. Yeah, so. But still, it's still terrifying for us New Hampshire people because it's also bit, our stomping yeah, grounds. It's a bit too close for comfort <laughs> for me. And we're not used to having serial killers Just up in this bitch. Around. So. Um, but really, he rarely was on the East Coast in, in comparison to his time in Washington and Alaska, mm-hmm. if you really look at it. But remember, he did rent a car during the week Mora went missing. But then again, he went around 500 miles in it. So in reality, he couldn't have went from Utah to New Hampshire and back to Utah. Yeah. At least not in that car. No. But that doesn't rule out the fact that he could have used the rental to drive to an airport, get on a plane, and end up on the East Coast. He favored the Manchester airport. So. Yeah. We don't know. But he would also have had to use an alias to get this flight because we know his his flights, most of them. So all in all, I don't really think that it would be plausible for him to have anything to do with Mora's disappearance. No. But still, a lot of people think he did, so I had to throw that in there. And I also want to talk about the little update. So at this place called Loon Mountain in New Hampshire, they found a body. Yeah. So, and they think that it might be Mora. I didn't know that they were saying that. Yeah. Oh, maybe it is that. Well, this was like in the very beginning. Like when they found it, they said that they had brought an archaeologist to kind of determine. Because no one gets murdered in New Hampshire, man. To determine how old the bones were and all this shit. That's the last I saw. So, yeah. Well, I heard that Mora's, you know, family is asking questions and and seeing if it it could be her. her. So that's a little update for for that. Well, I hope it's not, but I also hope it is so they get like a little bit of closure. I feel like after all these years, there's no way that she's still alive. Well, no, no, definitely not. So but. I kind of hope it's her so they can move on. Yeah. You know, because I think I think it hurts more not knowing than knowing. Yeah. I, I mean, do. they both hurt. They both suck. But not knowing, you just lay there in bed every night Wondering. with a million different things. Like, I hope my kid's not in pain right now. I hope my kid's not locked in a basement right now. I hope my kid isn't being tortured right now. Because like, all of those things are plausible. And you would rather, of course, as fucked up as it sounds, but you'd probably rather have your kid, you know, dead Deceased than, than fucking being, being tortured, tortured the last however kept, many years. Yeah. Right? Wouldn't yeah. you? 
So, I don't know. I just hope that they... I hope that whoever it is can, like, end somebody's... Suffering. Suffering. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, but we'll find out. But might be Mora. I, I, in a sick way, I hope it is. Yeah. I feel you. So, Brianna Maitland is also a name that is brought up often when talking about Israel Key's possible victims. On the morning of March 20th, 2004... The Vermont State Police got a call about an abandoned car on the property known as the Old Dutch Dutchburn Barn in Montgomery, Vermont. Strange, because it does remind me um, of Mora's disappearance. Mm. So we'll get to a little bit, but it, it to me they sound pretty similar. similar. So Brianna drove a, gr- a green 1986 Old Oldsmobile Delta. It was found at a very strange angle, like it was backed into the side of the building quickly. The rear bumper was actually stuck on the foundation of the house. What the fuck? The rear tires were like elevated. So it's like somebody was trying to quickly, Mm kind of like how Mora's car was like, you know, whatever, looked like it had been in like an accident with itself. (laughs) That's kind of like this car looks like it's like someone backed into the building and it was like an accident. The car was inoperable, but there were no brake marks or tire marks that would indicate that the car had crashed into the house because it because it like came off the road in an uncontrolled manner. It looked like it, somebody just literally just backed it into it. It didn't look like they hmm. lost control on the road yeah, I know and, what you're saying. you yeah. know, slammed into the house. When the state arrived, he didn't see anyone with the vehicle or inside the farmhouse that was abandoned. The car was unlocked, but the keys were missing. He also found two unopened paychecks from the Black Lantern Inn made out to Brianna Maitland. The Stady then traveled to the Black Lantern Inn, hoping to speak with Brianna, but the inn was closed. So he had the car towed. So we're going to go to the previous day. The day before this, Brianna, who was 17 at the time, went shopping with her mom in St. Albans, Vermont, Brianna was scheduled to work later that evening. She was a dishwasher at the Black Lantern Inn in Montgomery, Vermont. Her mom did say that she seemed anxious to come home from shopping and kind of hurry to work. When investigators spoke with her co-workers, they stated that work that evening was just like any other evening shift. Um, shift. No weird visitors or phone calls or nothing mm-hmm. weird happened to them or Brianna. Brianna's shift ended around 11.20 p.m., and a co-worker saw Brianna jump in her car and leave like normal. Peace out. This co-worker was the last person to see Brianna oh. alive. Yeah. Um, three days after her car was found abandoned, Brianna's mother contacted the Vermont State Police to report Brianna missing, which is kind of mind-blowing to me because if my kid is an hour late with no response, I'm calling the fucking police. Oh, yeah. I would not, especially at 17, I'm not waiting three fucking days. Yeah, that's insane. I don't know. <laughs> I'm fucking one hour late and they don't answer my fucking phone. I'll yeah. call the police. I don't give a fuck what anyone thinks. They can all lick my asshole. <laughs> um, that's what I'm going to do. One hour. I'd wait like not like a half, <laughs> half hour. One minute. One second. <laughs> one second too long, my friend. <laughs> I always would pick up my mom's phone call no matter how much she screamed I at know. me. You remember? Mm-hmm. I used to have that fucking the next tell with the oh, walkie talkie and my no. mom would literally we'd be like out like smoking pot with like a bunch of our homies uh-huh. you know and then all of a sudden you just hear my purse here Da-ding! Da-ding! Yep. because you didn't you couldn't like mute it or turn nope. it off they could walkie talkie you whenever Ever they wanted they scream what the fuck are you doing yeah. was... i'm still a ptsd from that was... So embarrassing for everyone. If anyone's listening that's ever shared a fucking blunt with me, you know you've yeah. been there, you've that, seen it. That walkie-talkie you hits wa- different when you're fucking high as fuck in the middle of the woods. <laughs> you think, I know you're smoking dope. That's what yeah. you say. Remember? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sure oh, do. Shit. And now everything's legal. How why the would they have think? Those, why would the? Why would why? 
did phone companies think that was a good I don't idea? Because they never met my mom, dude. <laughs> man, man, oh man! Yeah, I want to write remember next. Remember that? It would be screaming in my purse. Yeah, I want to write Nextel a very angry letter. Dear Mister Nextel, <laughs> fuck off. And she'd always talk shit about like just random people. Yeah. She'd be like, "Fuck stuff," and I'd be like, "Mom, she can hear you." Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I remember? Don't know. She knew a walkie talkie work. Care. I don't know. No, like, I still to this day don't think she realized. But then when I got the new phone, when I upgraded, remember I could do it so it would be like yeah, a phone oh call. God. I could switch it. It was so nice. But in the beginning, you couldn't. It was no, just, it, it was, was what just it was. her. All there. <laughs> yep. Every time. Oh my God. So, again, still have PTSD from that. But anyways, I always answered my mom even with phone calls like that. Yeah. So then Brianna's mother and stepdad waited two more days before they went to actually meet with the Vermont State Police and give them some pictures of Brianna. So now we're five days into this bullshit and they just decide they'll mosey on over to give pictures of their fucking missing daughter. But anyways, that's for a different episode to complain about. Um, The statey that had found Brianna's Oldsmobile started to put two and two together because he didn't know that they were... That was the same person missing that he found the car, even though that he saw her name on her paychecks in the car. So I don't understand why he didn't put two and two together when her mother called to report her missing, because obviously she said her name and he saw the name on the pay stubs. But anyways, um, he showed Brianna's mother the picture of Brianna's car that he had found, and she confirmed that it was indeed Brianna who was driving the car on the evening of March 19th, 2004. So my question is, and maybe I just missed it, um, it, they find the car, you can look up the registration and see who it's registered to. That's what I was thinking, too. Why didn't they call who it was registered to? Honestly, I just want to tell you this right now, I'm guessing because it's fucking Vermont. Yeah. That's true. No offense like that, if you're from Vermont. Because I've never, I've never heard, I, but... I didn't think of it until I was just sitting here and I'm like, you find a car, no driver. I was thinking that too. You can figure out what the, you have the license plate. You can figure out who it's registered to. Why would you not call who it's registered and be like, why is your car in, backed into, backed into a, a fucking, fucking house? I know. Or a building or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Could you bar. come down to the station and we have some questions? Yeah. No, like, he just got you... it towed and... I don't know. That's weird. 2004 is too long ago. Someone clearly didn't want to do paperwork. So, I don't know. Remember, he only looked at her name on the pay stub, went to her work, it was closed, and said, fuck it, never yeah, went back. Yeah, someone didn't want to do paperwork. So, I don't know. Unless it was registered to her mom, and I don't I don't know. I don't know why he didn't. And we see this in a lot of cases, though. There's a lot of shoulda, coulda, wouldas, or why didn't they do this earlier, or why didn't they do that? Sometimes I think they just don't fucking, they just don't give a big rat's ass. Like I said, you know? no one wants to do the extra work. <laughs> yeah. So the Black Lantern, Lantern Inn was literally right down the street from where her car was found. They believed at first, as always, that Brianna had just run away. Now we go to this bullshit. Stop thinking children run away. They don't all run away. Sometimes if, they're dead. And if they do, we should still find them and then yeah. figure out why, why they they're ran running away. away? And then maybe try to fix that problem at home. But now it's looking more like she was a victim. Police have had leads come in on Brianna's case multiple times, but nothing that ever brought them closer to finding out what happened to Brianna. Like I said, some people think it was our buddy old pal Israel. But the FBI personally looked into this theory because the FBI was like, this could Mm. be plausible. This sounds like an Israel keys. Yeah. And he also will get into, uh, you know, we're going to call it a semi-confirmed murder in Vermont that we'll get into. So they kind of thought, you know, maybe he did more in Vermont. Um, And they believe that he is not linked to her, though. Even though Israel did visit the East Coast, as we talked about, to visit family, Israel's financial records show that Israel wasn't on the East Coast during Brianna's disappearance. Hmm. Which I wish that they would release his financial records. Yeah. Then I'd really be in a tailspin. Oh my god! Fucking. uh, (laughs) You would be that. I would have to have the the The, stuff on the wall then with the the strings. I would have to in that that case. And then these episodes would probably turn into thirty episodes of me trying to connect the dots with his you know financial records and and his robberies and his 
And I'd Flights come here and, and you just, hadn't showered in weeks. Yeah, and I'd be sweating with a yeah. cigarette hanging out of my mouth. Gemma's and... like, mom's lost it. We need your help. <laughs> Gemma's hiding. Yeah. <laughs> With a piece of cheese. <laughs> yeah. I like, haven't eaten is, in days. This is the only piece of cheese I've had in days. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so at the same time, I'm like, yeah, I guess I'm glad I couldn't find his financial records. <laughs> but the FBI has him, and they say that he, it proves that he wasn't in, in that the area. area. Which makes me wonder if maybe there's a diff- there was a different serial killer. I know, because she does sound a lot like Maura, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And, you know, a lot of these cases kind of... As we get into more of them, each of them, I think, some of them sound, you know, very, very much Alike. similar. You know, they mm-hmm. sound similar. So then it makes you wonder, well, was there somebody else was lurking in the area? Yeah. You know? Doing the same thing as Israel? Just, I mean, I'm sure there's many of serial killers that haven't gotten caught. You can't yeah. say that every single serial killer has been caught or that we even know and could link all their murders together, you know? Exactly. They, somebody else could be doing exactly what Israel is doing all throughout the country and mm-hmm. not getting caught. Yep. Um, Israel also stated that he killed a pale girl with an old car that had a wealthy grandmother. Brianna drove a car that was made in 1986. Maybe he, maybe she just told him that she had a wealthy grandmother because he pulled the rouge of I'm only kidnapping you for ransom, mm-hmm. which we'll see that he does use that line in a later confirmed murder. She could have just said that, hoping that he would let her go if grandma paid up. Pay, yeah. So it was interesting that he said a pale girl with an old car and a mm-hmm. rich, rich Jima. So yeah. I don't know. Could be her. Could not be her. Who knows? We'll, we'll never know. No, we won't. That's the fucked up part. Annoying. I hate not knowing, damn it. I know, I'm sick of it. I'm do I wanna do a fucking assault case next time we hit true crime again after October. A what? A solved case. Oh, assault. I saw you thought you said assault. Assault case. And then I was like, assault. And then I'm like, does she assault. mean assault? Or does oh. she mean assault? Or <clears throat> what kind of assault are we doing? Sodium. Yeah. And a nah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I want. I'm gonna go. I want to do a solved case. Yeah, yeah, yeah So yeah, I don't yeah. have to have any speculation. I just say this, this bitch did this to this, this bitch. bitch. That's, that's it. That. Have a good night. The have end. A good one. You know. So between October 6, 2004, and October 16, 2004, Israel flew on a Southwest Airlines flight round trip from Seattle, Washington. To Manchester, New Hampshire, wow. which really terrifies me because, Steph, you lived in Manchester. I did. And I live about 15 minutes, well, we both now live about 15 minutes away from it. Yeah. So it's so, like we were talking about earlier, we could have fucking, when we were 10, could have walked right by that motherfucker. Well, this is 2004, so I was 14, you were 13. <sighs> okay, I was 13, could have. Could have, would have. He could have came to the Shaws we used to hang outside of. You never Very know. Well. You never know. I could have been picked off. You could have been. Not likely at 14. I didn't leave the house, so. You were agile, though, when you climbed that fence. Mm-hmm. Remember, you used to climb those that fucking tall-ass fence? I did. It was like 12 feet tall, and you'd t- climb it and I was over. athletic once, and I forget, because now that was awesome. there's not much I Oh, and what? Remember that time that chick passed out drunk, and you fucking carried her? Uh-huh. All the way up a hill and, like, across a field? I did. We won't that? say what she said to me, but yeah. Yeah, it was fucked up. But I mean, yeah. anyway. I was just proud of you for fucking doing that feat. You should have fucking immediately dropped her right on her fucking head, but. In my head, I did, but. You're a. I didn't. Oh, did you? Oh, I didn't know if you did. I don't think you did. I think I put her down. Gently? Yes. You should have just. Plop. And they said, well, that's where I end. <laughs> the end of this ride, bitch. Sorry. This ain't no free ride. <laughs> So he rented a vehicle from Enterprise, a red Kia Amante, and he drove 1,745 miles in it and also had permission to leave the state in it. This Enterprise was located in Manchester, New Hampshire. Also weird because why was Israel in New Hampshire anyway? Yeah. Like what? What was the reason? Why did he fly here? Some think maybe he was returning to the scene of a crime. Oh. A crime that involved Maura Murray. Is that how you say her last name? Murray. I, Maura Murray. I it's say a Maura tongue Murray. twister for me because I'm. That's Maura me. Murray is what I'd say, but. Maura Murray. Yeah. Okay. 
And he also just happened to show up right after Mora's case gained nationwide traction. Huh. So obviously we know she's a very big case. Everybody's heard of her. And he just happened to show back up in New Hampshire right when her case started getting, Pop, you know, yeah. na- like worldwide, World, yeah. whatever, National nationwide, att- whatever. Nation attention. So some people think he just came here to just bask in all his glory of, you know, I did it. On February 27th, 2005, Israel wrote an email that he arrived back from visiting some friends in Port Angeles, Washington, around 3 a.m. But if you recall from past recordings I've played from Israel himself, Israel stated that he never had any friends. Yeah. (laughs) And it makes you wonder if that's some sort of code, you know, kind of with himself. Because he used to always tell... um, Tammy, that he'd be going to visit friends, but he'd be like, well, I didn't have any friends. friends. And like, say to the FBI, that was his murdering time. So I wonder if that was like his little chuckle, you know, his, yeah, his inside, friends were dead. Yeah, like his inside joke with himself, like going to see friends really meant going, going to for murder. murder. Yeah. Then on March, March 1st, 2005, Israel took a day canoe trip and was spotted camping at a location that you could only get to by boat in Washington. Hmm. On March 4th, 2005, a man named Delmar Wayne Sample was last seen around 11 a.m. while he was getting gas at a gas station in Centralia, Washington. Delmar lived in Onalaska, Washington, but was planning to spend a long weekend in the woods. But sadly, he was never heard from or seen again. Hmm. His truck was eventually found locked and abandoned at a roadside pullout near Lake Quinault in Quinault, Washington. Delmar didn't even have a chance to take out any food or his sleeping bag since they were all found in his truck. Weird. Police didn't see any sign of foul play at his truck, but Israel did like to move vehicles away from where the abduction actually took place. I wouldn't be surprised if that green filing cabinet that went missing, remember, Mm -hmm. was full of people's car keys that he killed. Or God knows what else. Yeah, or whatever else he took from their car. Plus, we see a pattern of abandoned cars like Brianna Maitland and Mm -hmm. Maura Murray. No keys, no signs of foul play. They're all kind of the same shit. Mm -hmm. Delmar did mention to friends that he wanted to drive to Tillamook, Oregon, But where his truck was found was not off of the route that would have led him there. So if he was planning to go there like he told everybody, he wasn't heading in that direction. But Delmar was also the type of guy to change plans quickly without really giving it a second thought. Delmar also owned a mountain bike that was never found. He had just purchased it before his disappearance. He could have taken a bike ride and gotten lost in the woods. Mm Mm-hmm. But weirdly enough, no bikes were found around his bike tracks were found around his vehicle, which doesn't make sense unless he carried his bike for quite some time, which would be highly unusual to just carry your bike. You'd get right on it and take off like a bat out of hell, right? Yeah. Delmar wasn't a stupid guy. He was a pharmacist and worked in the pharmacy at Walmart when he didn't return to work after his long weekend and you notice a lot of these are happening on long, long weekends, weekends which makes me wonder because that would give Israel keys extra time to travel cuz he's got an extra day yeah um his coworkers became concerned it wasn't normal for delmar to just not show up to work especially without calling delmar's friends and family didn't notice anything about delmar that was strange before his disappearance He didn't seem depressed and didn't have any reason at all to want to disappear. And his case remains unsolved to this day. So obviously Israel was most definitely in Washington during Delmar's disappearance. Yeah. Also, he, we know that Israel liked to stalk people in the wilderness and he didn't care about gender or age. No, he didn't. So it could have definitely been... Israel keys. But the thing that really is sticking with me is how come there was no um, bike tracks? Because yeah. his bike was missing. He was like super stoked to get the bike, ready to go bike ride. And that was yeah. like his thing. 
and there's no bike tracks anywhere near the truck. So either the truck was moved from where it originally was, mm-hmm. and there's probably bike tracks where it somewhere was. where it was, or somebody fucking killed him and stole his fucking bike. I think it was and moved. just moved it from what I, I think th- it was. Moved I think too. it was moved from its original location. But my thing is, can we? Why? Why do people want to do things alone, alone? in the woods? <laughs> I know. And I if don't you're gonna see, do things. See alone that in the woods, as an appeal. Don't do like a normal camp where you're on the ground. Be like a fucking spider monkey. Build some shelter in a tree. Ooh, there you go. That way. People can't get to you. Can't sneak easy. up on you. You can hear someone climbing a tree at you. Yeah, exactly. Um, I don't know why there people like doing. I I personally wouldn't go camping I mean, alone. It's peaceful in the woods. I will give you that. It's nice and peaceful. Yeah, but you sh- quiet. Shouldn't you go have alone. Time to reflect on life. But stop doing it. Yeah, I'm not interested. Don't worry. Um, oh, and just for the record, if you like just stop hearing from me and I just don't show up to work and, you know, I'm just vanished and not answering anything, that will never be by choice. Same. Just for the record. I will never just randomly vanish by choice. I will never run away. I will never go start a new life. If you don't hear from me, something's terribly wrong. Just for the record. Same. But I don't know. Shit happens. Uh, yeah. I could have a mental breakdown and just be like, see ya. I'm going to start a new life somewhere. I've thought about it. So, but I mean, still be worried. Still, still call be the concerned. police. I'm still still, still call, the call the police. And if they find me, I'll just say, hey, can you just tell them I'm gone? Yeah. <laughs> I'm gone. But I'm just saying, for the record, um, always call the police for me. Because yeah. I will never be Same. a time. Because, you know. I just want to put that out Always there. call the police for me. Because I'm tired of the, oh, it's a runaway thing. Or, oh, yeah. maybe they needed some time to... It's like these people just assume. And you know what assume makes. Makes an ass out of you and me, baby. Yep. You right, you right. <laughs> Even Israel <laughs> Keith thinks you're funny. <laughs> um, I guess that's good. I don't know how I feel about that. So we're going to leave it here at um, Delmar. Mr. Delmar. Mr. Um, Delmar. And obviously, we told you in the beginning of the episode, we are taking a little break from Israel Keys, and we're going to do some creepy stuff. And also, I'm going to post some polls, too, on um, what kind of creepy stuff you want to hear. We've gotten some cool suggestions from people. I've thought of different Halloween-y, creepy, spooky, paranormal stuff, and we'll put up polls and stuff to see what you guys would rather work, hear for work. each week and kind of just go from there and we'll keep it spooky dooky i was gonna say something why do i i say shit before i even think of it man i don't know spooky (laughs) um you know it's a spooky dooky me after taco bell i was gonna say my fucking toilet after taco bell Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. fiery ass are you ready ready for for that urban dick urban dick Urban dick. Urban dick. Dick, 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 I'll read it in a sentence. Both my big toe and throat are still bothering me from giving my girlfriend the Brazilian iron sides last night. I wonder if there's like tools that read these and they're like, that's what I'm doing to Sam tonight. I feel like there must be. You know what I mean? Yeah. This was uh, written by a throbbing monster. Oh, I bet he is throbbing. (laughs) Gross. All right. Mine's a short one this week. It's called a hot Carl. Oh, everyone loves a hot Carl. <laughs> to excrete fecal matter into Oof. a sock. I knew and... it was shit. I knew it was shit. <laughs> and then to hit a person in the face with the sock filled with feces. Yeah, I knew it had to do with <laughs> shit. I was waiting for it, man. I pooped in my sock. <laughs> I pooped in my sock. <laughs> I pooped in my sock while in the Jeep and jumped out and gave a hot Carl to the homeless man. That's fucked up. 
The poor old <laughs> man. I know that is fucked up. Fuck you, fucking. It doesn't tell me who wrote it. Remember that story we heard about a girl we knew in high school and her boyfriend, who they are still together, married with three kids, but anyway. Oh, shit. Um, and he used to take the condom off after ejaculating and slap her with it. No, I have no idea. But oh, when, we get, when we get off air, I recall. I would like you to tell me who it is. They Clearly, it was a romance that was I, meant to last forever. I can't think of somebody, anybody I know with three chillins. Yeah, she's got um, three of them. Damn. She's still with the same high school yeah, uh, yeah, they're still together and they're married. Wow. They've been together 15 years. What? Okay, I don't even remember. Do I know this person? Yeah, you do. Were they my friend? I was friends with her many moons ago, but you knew her. Oh, I just knew of her. Yeah. Oh. Interesting. So. We'll have to talk about it off yes. there. Anyway, let's wrap her up. So, uh, merch. We got merch, guys. Buy, buy the, the, the merch. Um, you can message us on, you know, Instagram, Facebook. You can email us. Um, we take PayPal for our merchy birch. We got t-shirts. We got car decals. Ooh, yeah. Um, we also did a collab with Lux and Luca. You can go to www.luxandluca.com and you can click on shop and collaborations and the podcast from the crypt you'll see a bunch of fucking cool jewelry and money clips and fucking really awesome shit and you can use code crypt c-r-y-p-t all caps and you'll get 15 percent off get it so hit it hit it and if you go to our instagram or facebook you can find our merch on there you can also message us anywhere or email us anywhere and we can send you pictorials of what we got going on for merchy merch we should make a little store that uh Tan actually set up a whole like store for us, and oh shit, I just haven't done anything with it. Oh, so we should okay. do it. <laughs> we should do it. All right, all right, all right. Um, so maybe we'll get that going. Yeah, for you guys, if you give a shit. Um, so buy our merch, support us, do it. Do support it. us, starving artists. We are. I am starving. <laughs> Just steal a credit card and order yourself some fucking. I'm gonna do it. Mc I'm gonna do it. McDougals. McDougals. That's <laughs> something else. But anyway, all right. Oh, can I tell you one funny thing that Gemma Before said? Right out, yeah. So you probably saw on Facebook because I posted on Facebook. So me and my mom were talking about asthma, right? And my oh, mom's yeah. talking about asthma, whatever. And then Gemma goes, I know what asthma is. And I'm like, oh, yeah, what is it? And she goes, it's when you lose your memoration. <laughs> and I'm like, no, that's, that's amnesia, amnesia. And that's when you lose your memory. Rememoration. But she thought she was so good. Ooh, asthma is when you lose your, your memoration. <laughs> like, she was like sliding For those sure. DMs, you yeah, know? She was like, she knew. Oh, she sure. had that she confidence. Had she didn't. It was good. But that's cute. It was so cute. Remembration. I was literally dead. All right. Anyways, um, we love you guys. Hail Satin. And we'll see you in here. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>